Hi, um, I'm David Cummins, I'm the Education Fellow for Royal Maternity Hospital and today we're going to show you how to set up the trolley for an elective intubation. So now we're going to talk through uh, team allocation and in, a, in an ideal situation we should have at least five people during an elective intubation. So the primary person is the leader and this is usually the most senior person who is on the floor at the time, your registrar or your consultant or sometimes even the neonatal sister. As long as this person is comfortable, has done this procedure many times, they can be the leader. The leader should be the only person who is talking during the elective intubation. The leader should be the one communicating with the rest of the team and should be clearly communicating with each person during the resuscitation. So your next person is the airway and they are at the head of the bed. They are using the face mask to deliver um, intermittent positive pressure ventilation to the baby and um, the person who is ultimately going to intubate the baby. This person will be guided by the leader and should be taking their direction from them. So the next member of the team is the nurse and this is usually the person who has been looking after the baby for the clinical shift. Um, and they will be in charge of providing suctioning um, making sure that if the baby requires more oxygen that the blender is turned up and also getting more equipment from the resus trolley if needed. Our fourth person will be in charge of administering drugs and they will usually be on the other side of the bed from the nurse and we will go through the drugs at the next stage but they will be under the guidance of our leader. We can see at the bottom uh, we should also have a scribe and this is to make sure that we have uh, an accurate timeline so this can be documented in the notes. So now we're going to talk about pre-medication for elective intubation and you should refer to the folder on the resus trolley on how to make these drugs up and the correct doses. So the first drug we have is atropine and this is to prevent bradycardia. This should be given as a bolus dose as directed by the leader and communicated to them throughout. Our second medication is fentanyl and this is for sedation. This should be given slowly over at least two minutes with a slow flush because remember there is the connection on the cannula so slow flush is very important. Again communicate with the leader throughout and follow their direction. Lastly, succimethomium. This is for muscle relaxation and again communicate with the leader when you're giving it and when it's been uh, fully administered as a bolus dose. We should have at least two of each of these drawn up. Sometimes we may need a second dose but that should be directed by the leader. So this is the equipment that we should have when performing an elective intubation and all of the equipment should be appropriately sized for your baby. Firstly we have a range of face masks and you should make sure that the pressures on the neopuff are set appropriately. Suction catheters, the suction should be checked and we should have again an appropriate sized suction catheter. We have our laryngoscope blades a Miller 00, zero and that is generally for babies less than 28 weeks, a Miller 0 for 28 to 36 weeks and a Miller 1 for a full term baby. It is really important that you pick the correct sized blade for the size of the baby as the wrong size will obstruct your view. So next we have a range of ET tubes. Generally a two and a half ET for less than one kilo. 
a size 3 if the baby is between 1 and 2 kilos, a size 3.5 if the baby's between 2 and 3 kilos, and over 3 kilos you can either use a 3.5 or a size 4. And you can see that it tells you the size on the side of the tube. Depending on whether you're doing a nasal or an oral intubation, you should have a suction catheter passed through your ET tube in order to perform a cell dinger through the nose. If you're performing an oral intubation, you can have a stylet through the end of the ET tube to assist passing it through the cords, always ensuring that the end of the stylet does not protrude past the end of the ET tube as this is rigid and will cause trauma. So it should be just about a centimeter before the end of your ET. So if you're performing a nasal intubation, you should lubricate the end of your ET tube to assist passing through the nostrils. You should also have a pair of Tilly's forceps to assist in passing the tube through the cords. Once the intubation is complete, we need a neostat to confirm position and they come in these foil packets and it should flash yellow if there is gas exchange and that confirms your position alongside auscultation and a chest x-ray. Lastly we need to secure the tube and in Belfast we secure our tubes with two trouser legs, one on either side of the face. Geoderm goes down first to protect the skin and our brown paint to assist in sticking the tubes down. So in summary this is what we need for an oral intubation. Blade, tube, a stylet, or capnograph, tapes, brown paint and geoderm, and an appropriate face mask and suction catheter. And now a nasal tube, and you notice the only differences are a suction catheter passed through your ET tube with lubricant and a pair of Tilly's forceps.